as the only joke, I go around and I've seen a lot. I can tell you it's frightening. It is frightening. The damage that this, not deliberately, I think they simply just don't know what to do with their waste. But the damage that they're doing to the environment in Ogijo is enormous. Traditional ruler of Ogijo and other residents of Ikbetoro community in Ogun State, Southwest Nigeria, sharing their experiences and the negative impact of activities of use the battery recycling facilities within their locality. Same is the story of many other communities around the world where used lead acid battery recycling is going on. My colleagues and I have been and I have been extensively worked with with the sector in, in, in a lot of areas in Germany, in Europe, but also in, in African countries. And of course, we see a, a certain temptation. It's a very profitable business to even increase the profitability by leaving away certain measures of keeping the environment clean and, and, and the workers safe. Battery will always be as hard as waste, um, and I can say battery volumes of all types are growing all over the world. So it's not only a Nigerian problem; it's a global problem. But we should not also overlook the chances. We really we really need these technologies, we need solar power, we need backup systems, we need our devices, we need electric mobility. I can say this is a problem that can be managed. Ogun State harbors the highest number of used battery and non-ferrous metal recycling and collection facilities in Nigeria. As important as batteries are in powering energy systems, including automobiles, they contain cancer-causing and toxic heavy metals like lead and mercury, which contaminate the environment and compromise human safety during recycling, if not properly handled. Uh, beyond the companies of the community, we have also gone out ourselves. We have done our reconnaissance and uh, we can see that we have a huge problem on our hands uh, when it comes to managing the waste uh, from these uh, industries and especially the industry is handling the recycling of uh, the ferrous and the non-ferrous metals. Uh, you agree with me that uh, you have a lot of lead in most of these uh, materials and lead is uh, not just dangerous, it's, it's really carcinogenic. Or, uh, when you get ingested in the human body, it can have a, a long period of uh, uh, impact on the health in the body. So, uh, and then we have an aggregate of all these industries uh, that produce materials in Lagos, I mean, uh, in Ogo State. Uh, in, in the sub saharan Africa, I think Nigeria has the highest number of these industries. And I think uh, Nigeria has about, I think, uh, 10 of these industries, all right, which is the biggest in sub saharan Africa. And uh, Ogo State has eight of these industries. Out of the 10 in the whole nation, we have eight. And the Okijo has five of this, so you can see it's a major issue. We have a huge pile of these uh, materials that uh, has to undergo the secondary recycling. But uh, we have uh, so much, so many artisanal recyclers that are not doing the right thing. And we have this pile of waste, so it has been impacting the life of the community. Yes, they've been escalating this problem to us, and we've also gone out to identify these problems. And they were not folding our arms and that we have the collaboration of the national government and the global alliance also uh, to join hands together to find a common solution. Though a global challenge, Nigeria has seen a surge in the use of lead acid batteries given their affordability and availability. This inception and capacity building workshop tagged Partnership for Responsible Battery and Metal Recycling, Probamet, is therefore geared towards collective action to define effective standards for sound battery recycling. I think there are a lot of synergies between those stakeholders. So there's, for example, the solar industry, they have a waste problem. They don't know where to, go, where to put their batteries, where to send them to. to. The, there's a recycling industry. And there's also the um, um, downstream industry, like the metal, um, metal industry, for example, in Europe. And um, they're actually interested in doing business with Nigeria but they would never do business with substandard recyclers. So I think there's, um, uh, with this partnership, there's uh, potential for 
continuously improving this um, this relationship and there's a win-win-win situation for all partners involved and yeah I'm just hoping that decision makers in Nigeria will realize that um, enforcing standards is not against the industry but it's actually helping the industry to to make business to get new business opportunities for the world. The youth led us that recycling batteries uh, have become a very thriving business in Nigeria uh, why? Not a bad business because what we campaign or what we advocate for is proper waste management and recycling is a component of proper waste management. Now what happens in the used battery sector is we have begun to see what we call improper waste management, used lead acid recycling management. What do we mean? A lot of used lead acid recycling that are happening are being done in an environmentally unsound manner. Whereas we recommend recycling as the best approach of material recovery for any waste material, but then it has to be done in an environmentally sound way. So we decided that, okay, is to raise a national advocacy awareness around it. And to do it better is to collaborate with the institutions, either from a policy point of view or from a regulatory point of view. Um, we got next, uh, Federal Ministry of Environment to put a policy in place for waste battery management. That was good in 2021. We got NESRA to put a regulation in place for the regulating sector based on our studies and advocacy work. That was very good. Now, that wouldn't solve the whole problem. Just putting regulatory framework in place is not sufficient. What we thought should happen was what I would call a collaborative effort. Collaborative effort because the use lead as a recycling battery is a big employer of labor. And where there is no capacity and there are economics considerations in terms of employability, then you really have to look at it from both sides. It is not by closing any facility, it's about how do we get the facility to upgrade in such a way that our interest is environment is safe and they do their business and environmentally sound. So, Probamate is a project initiative that is bringing different angles of partnership between the government, between the industry, and between the host communities. With the project, the federal government and her partners, the German government, Strandev Nigeria and GIZ, hope to achieve a win-win scenario where environmental protection aligns with economic prosperity and improved social well-being.